Hello dear friends, welcome back to RC with Adam. My name is Adam. In this video, I am going to show you how to connect the FlySky FSIA6B receiver to your Wizard X220 flight controller, the SP Racing F3 flight controller, and we're going to use our FSI6X transmitter and we're going to connect this all using iBus protocol in Betaflight. We're going to do this pretty fast, but in case you're super impatient, these are the notes that I've got. So take a good look of that because that's what we're going to do. Did I just say look of that? I sure did. All right, let's get started. Step one, make sure that your receiver is bound with your transmitter. We're not going to cover that in this video, but I have another video. So go check that out if you need help with that. What you want to do is make sure that this connector, we need this connector cable here, and it's going to have a servo style connector on one side. It's like a flat black kind of cable. And you want to plug that into on the, see on the top there where it's green, it says IBUS, and then on the right hand side it says servo. You want to plug it into this port right here. That's the port right there. Boop. Plug that right in there. Now you see this cable, I actually made this one, but your quadcopter probably comes with this cable if it's the standard Wizard X220. Um, this is not for the Wizard X220S because that is a different flight controller. This is the SP Racing F3 flight controller and I'll flash a uh, screenshot of the actual manual up on the screen here just in case you're wondering about what all this stuff is. Now on the other side of this connector, uh, this connector cable, you want to plug it in. This is a little, this one has uh, three little pins right here, three little, you know, ports. Yeah. It has a little slot for each wire, so this one's smaller. Yours might fit this connector port perfectly, but if it doesn't, you want to plug it in so that the black wire or the ground wire is all the way towards the, well, in this case, towards the top, or it's towards the side of the port with the one, okay? There's a little one and there's a little eight right there, and you want to plug it in towards the side towards the one, all right? And notice this arrow, because this is the orientation that we're looking at on the board. So that means that this board thinks that that way is forward. But if you watch my setup guide, we'll take care of all that, you know, for, for the, through the setup guide. So we won't cover that now. Oh, getting into too much detail. Now what we can do is we can slide this out of the way and we get in our transmitter here. This is the FSI6X. Again, we're already bound to the quadcopter, so we don't need to mess with that. What we're gonna do is we're gonna go into the menu here we're going to go into the system menu and then we're going to scroll down to RX setup. Now we're going to scroll down to output mode. Okay, press OK to, so we can get to the other side of the menu here. See, we have uh, output and we have serial. What we want is for this to be on iBus. So you can use the up and down buttons to scroll and make sure that it's on iBus, the little arrow. These don't matter right now. I mean, we don't care about those. We care that it's on iBus. Press and hold cancel to save it. Go back in there and make sure it's saved, and it did. Okay, so that's it, that's it, we're done. You can set up all the other switches and stuff, but again, we're not gonna cover that in this video, but I talk all about that in the setup guide. Now, let's jump into Betaflight. And at this point, you're going to need a USB data cable. You need to be able to carry data, not just for charging. We're also gonna need a battery. I like to use a bigger battery so I don't drain the battery while I'm connected to the flight controller. Important note right here, this right here is the video transmitter. That's what this antenna thingy is for. You wanna make sure you have your antenna on the video transmitter. Um, otherwise, you could damage your tra video transmitter here. Also, it's gonna get hot, so watch out for that. Um, at this point, all we need to do is just plug the quadcopter into, or plug the USB cable into the quadcopter, and then we'll get into beta flight here, and we will hit connect. And it doesn't wanna work, so let's see, let's scroll. Oh, here we go. Let's find the right thing here. Okay, fun troubleshooting tip. Sometimes if your quadcopter won't connect, go over to this uh, little drop-down menu here and then try the different options until it connects. Another fun troubleshooting tip, sometimes you just have to disconnect your USB cable, however it's connected to your computer. Get rid of Betaflight, reopen Betaflight, and then try to connect and it still won't connect and so so we just keep we just keep trying we're just gonna that's what it takes sometimes you just keep trying you just say hey I'm gonna keep trying man I'm not gonna stop trying no sir not me let's try this again 
All right. Okay, now we're connected. All right, took a little bit of tries there. Sometimes that happens. What we want to do is we want to go into the ports tab on the left hand menu. Now, down right here where it says UR3, we want on the serial RX column, we want to select serial RX. I've already selected it. So you want to select it, you want it to be yellow. And then we're going to go down here and we're going to say save and reboot. That's really important. And then what we're going to do now is we're going to go to the configuration tab. Now we're going to scroll down just a little bit here. And again, you'll be setting all, up all kinds of other stuff when, when you actually go through the setup process for this quadcopter. What we want is this receiver box right here. And then you want for the, uh, it's called receiver mode. You want to hit the drop down menu and select serial based receiver right there, okay? And then down here, Serial Receiver Provider, you want to select iBus. There's all kinds of options. You want to select iBus and then click Save and Reboot. Cool. Then you want to go, um, what I like to do, let's go back to the Ports tab, make sure the ports actually stayed the same. Come back here to Configuration, make sure that stayed the same. Sometimes it won't. Sometimes it'll be difficult for it to like it won't process and it won't save it. Um, and so if that happens, just try rebooting and you might even try installing a newer version of Betaflight or, or reflashing the firmware. I'm not exactly sure how to fix that, but it happens sometimes. So you're not alone if that's happening to you. Now, here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna go down to the receiver tab on the left hand side, left hand menu, click on the receiver tab. And then in here now is where we need to connect our battery to our uh, quadcopter. We're gonna connect the battery here. And then we're also gonna get our transmitter. Let's get our transmitter and turn our transmitter on here. And so we should be connected. And so now we can see that the quadcopter will respond to our controls. And none of these switches do anything because I haven't set them up yet. I have videos about how to set up the switches in the transmitter and on Betaflight. At this point, you might notice that you see that little quadcopter preview. You might notice that your quadcopter seems to be drifting. You'll also notice this in flight. This might, may or may not be a problem for you right now, but if it is a problem, go ahead and check out this video right over here about how to get rid of that drift. Thanks for watching everybody. I appreciate you, I appreciate your time, and I will see you again very soon.